you may be at the point where you want to get started with Kubernetes. You want to jump in, but you don't have a cloud account, so you can't get a managed Kubernetes service cluster up and running, or you don't have you know a local machine that you want to spin up a bunch of VMs on, or you don't have a local home lab with servers running in your house or something like that. So what you can do is you can actually configure Kubernetes clusters locally. And there are a few different options, but one of the options that I personally like the best and that I'm going to showcase here is kind. So let's kind of talk about why kind is a thing. All right, so let's talk about a typical Kubernetes environment. So the first piece is you're always going to have your control planes and hopefully at least two worker nodes. Now you should usually have three control planes and three worker nodes. Okay. But really quick, just to go over this, the worker nodes, this is where stuff like pods will exist. And within those pods are your application stacks. Now your control plane, this is like the brains of the operation, right? So let's say you are a super happy user because you are interacting with Kubernetes. So you do things like retrieve pods and you want to create new pods. So you actually send that traffic via an API call post request to the API server. And then the API server lets the cluster know what's going on. It gets scheduled to the worker nodes via the Kubernetes scheduler and you're happy and you have your pods running within your worker nodes. Now here's the thing, this is, you know, just three servers here if we're thinking about these boxes and wow, my art skills are so good. No, they're not. But in your environment, like in your, you know, your computer here, you don't want, you will, not that maybe you don't want, you don't have three servers, you just have your one computer here. So that's where kind comes in. So kind literally takes your whole computer, well, not the whole thing, it takes some CPU, some memory, some storage, and it puts the control plane and the worker node, and sometimes even worker nodes, you can virtualize and specify multiple nodes in one place. You don't have to worry about having multiple servers, etc. That way you can run this locally. So let's see exactly how to get this whole kind cluster thing up and running. All right, so if you go to kind.sigs.kads.io, you will see some documentation that you can use to get a kind cluster up and running, okay? So this is the general documentation. If we scroll down here, we can see kind create cluster, etc. But diving into it a little bit further in terms of steps that you need, First, you're gonna to have to install Kind on Linux, on Mac, on Windows, but you also have some easier options. So with Homebrew, for example. So I'm on a Mac, I'll go ahead and I'll copy that, and I will head over to my terminal here and run the installation. All right, and once that's complete, we can go ahead and type Kind, and we have a couple of commands here. So build, we're going to build it based on a node image, completion, create, delete, etc. So if we type kind create help, we can see some of the flags here. Okay, so available commands cluster, kind create cluster help. We can see some image, some cube configs, name, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type kind create cluster name kind cluster okay so first things first it's going to ensure that i have a node image because i'm not specifying a different node image i'm just using the default kind node image it's pulling on kubernetes version 1.30.0 which is great the newest that's released right now it's preparing the nodes for us writing the configuration to those nodes it then starts the control plane because again remember everything is running locally here and then last but not least it installs our container network interface our storage class and now we're good to go so if we go ahead and set 
Actually, let's see. I don't think it does it for us automatically. Oh, it actually does. Okay, cool. So we do have our kind cluster here. You could do kubectl, get pods, namespace default. Oop, nothing's actually running in there. Let's do cube system, right? And we can see it looks very similar to a standard Kubernetes manifest. It's running the cube proxy etcd locally so again because this is local this is going to be a dev environment right we're not going to want to do like any production level workloads here but if you want to get started with kubernetes and just dive in and have a playground to work with this is one way to do it